We often hear about the dizzying speed of technological progress, suggesting that our virtual landscapes are thriving and constantly evolving. Yet, why does it sometimes feel like we're coding on thin ice? I'm not alone in this sentiment. My generation is coding in the shadow of giants. We are also the architects of tomorrow, yet we're hunted by the specter of crumbling foundations. How can we build a strong and lasting digital world when there's so much pressure to get things done quickly? Perhaps that's why we see a trend of engineers seeking sanctuary in methodologies that promise a balance. My name is Juan Carlos, and I get to navigate this dilemma every day in my day job at Microsoft. For that reason, I've had to find ways to mitigate this to thrive at my job. Today, I get to share a bit of what I've learned with you. A project lands on your desk with a deadline that is just around the corner, and it feels like you're being asked to perform a miracle. That's what leads to what's often called technical debt. Imagine you're building a house, but you have to meet a deadline, so you skip some steps. Maybe you don't wait for the concrete to dry completely before building on it. It'll hold up, for now, but down the line, you're looking at some serious repairs. That's technical debt in the coding world. Quick fixes and hacks might save time today, but they're just loans taken out against the future of the project. I've felt this firsthand many times, and rushing can lead to some, let's say, less than stellar outcomes. Take the infamous case of Cyberpunk 2077, a game I love, by the way, but its launch was a learning experience. The rush to release by a certain date led to a game that was more bug than features on older consoles. The backlash was fierce years, the memes were merciless, and they had of course to issue a ton of refunds. The rush to meet that release date meant the quality of the game took a backseat, and they paid the price for it, both financially and in reputation. So how have we been dealing with this as an industry? Well, on one hand we have the typical productivity advice, and on the other one there's just the push to hire more and more people. Sure, you can jot down to-do lists, block out calendar times, and set reminders. All those classic time management moves, they help, but at some point I realized that I needed something a bit more tailored for the job. And regarding just hiring people and getting them to work through the weekends, it's just a recipe for burnout. So what can we do about all of this? Well, there's an approach that I kind of stumbled upon almost by accident. In my old job, after being several features deep into technical debt, an engineer in my team suggested to try and start paying it off in small amounts. That idea is what turned into what I now call the to commit rule. For every change you introduce, you make two commits. The first is your typical feature or bug fix. That's your bread and butter already. But you take that one step further every time you can. You try and pair that commit with a second one. A second one that is dedicated solely to improve the code's quality. It's like cleaning up after a meal. It doesn't really change what you ate, but it sure makes your kitchen a nicer place to cook the next time. At least if I cooked at all. And while it may just seem like extra work, I like to think that this rule is tailor-made for the productivity challenge that at least I experience every day. It's not about adding more to your plate. It's about ensuring that you don't end up with a mountain of dishes later on. By making incremental improvements, you're keeping the code base healthy, which actually speeds up your work in the long run. It's like agile development for your coding habits. Small, manageable improvements that keep the code base flexible and responsive to change. You're not overhauling the system with this, you're just fine-tuning it. And that's key in a world where the only constant is change. There's this age-old philosophical idea that two opposing forces can exist in harmony, complementing each other. Think yin and yang, a circle split into swirling black and white halves, each containing a tiny bit of the other's essence. It's a representation of how seemingly contrary forces are actually interconnected and interdependent in the natural world, giving rise to each other in turn. And this is everywhere, from the cycle of predator and prey to the balance of ecosystems. And we see it a lot in human endeavors too, like the creation of art, the balancing of a budget, or the strategy behind a chess game. I draw inspiration from this because I genuinely feel the pull in both directions, and whenever I don't get the balance right, I feel my performance at work suffer. On one side, there's this relentless drive to deliver new features that we just talked about. This is the yang, the active, outward-facing energy that propels progress. And on the other side, there's a yin the quieter but equally vital need for clean, efficient code that won't crumble under its own complexity. The two-commit rule is my attempt at a harmonious solution, a bridge between the rush of feature development and the meticulous craft of writing clean code. It's an acknowledgement that while we must move quickly to keep up, we cannot afford to neglect the integrity of our foundations. Now, if this dualism is a philosophy, I see Kaizen as a methodology. Kaizen is this beautiful Japanese concept that I came across that translates to continuous improvement. It's about 
making small incremental changes that add up over time. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with that second commit. So the two commit rule works for me because it's grounded in the reality of our work rhythm. You get the immediate satisfaction of shipping something tangible and then almost like a ritual, you take a moment to refine and to polish. Imagine it's Tuesday morning and you're working on a feature. You've got your first commit locked and loaded and it's a shining beacon of new functionality. But you inevitably noticed something in the code base that is a bit like that one drawer that we all have at home, overflowing with like everything. A bit of a mess. So at that point, you dive into that second commit. You're cleaning up that function that took you a while to understand and streamlining it like Mary Kondo is watching over your shoulder. It's not just tidying up though, it's hopefully making it spark joy for whoever reads that code next. This commit is your nod to code quality, and it's where you apply that slice of technical polish. Now, as much as I'd love to measure the winds of this rule with a ruler and a stopwatch, it's not that simple. Metrics here are a bit more nuanced. On one hand, I like to keep an eye on our list of technical debt items in the backlog. If those are shrinking, I like to think that we're on the right track. Additionally, I look for patterns in my teammates' PRs. Do the changes they're making flow smoothly over my cleaned up code? Did I save them some time and pain? Lastly, I like to have one metric for myself to make sure I don't blow this rule out of proportion. I'm looking at the size of my own pull requests. I like to be mindful of reviewers' time, and if the PR title promises one thing and my code changes deliver another one, well, I'll be less likely to get prompt reviews in the future. And for the early and career devs out there, this could be your secret weapon. It shows that you're not just a coder, you're also a craftsman. Caring for the code base like a gardener, nurturing growth, and pruning weeds. So I believe it's a mindset that can really set you apart. The best part about this for me, it's that it's not just for programmers. Almost any information worker can adapt this rule to increase their productivity by making a commitment to not only push forward, but also to refine and improve what's already there. For instance, if you're a writer, your first commit could be drafting a new article, while the second could be revising a previous piece or refining your writing process. It's just about that equilibrium, propelling creativity while perfecting your expertise. However, the to commit rule is really only one tool in your utility build. There's a lot more that I've had to incorporate to mine to keep up with today's demands of a job in tech. If you're interested in those, I recently uploaded a video about that that you can watch next here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.